What's up, guys? Andrew here from IGN. I am with Forrest Dowling, lead level designer, Bioshock Infinite. How are you doing, Forrest? I am doing great. And we are looking at the Clash in the Clouds content. This is the first DLC for Bioshock Infinite. Uh, we're in, what is it, the Emporia Arcade map. And uh, can you talk a little bit about like what this DLC is? Um, you know, it's very combat oriented, but like what exactly are we doing in each of these sections? Yeah, so um, we really set out to kind of make the most uh, crazy kind of expression of Bioshock combat that we could. Um, and in fact, you're seeing right now already, I think something you probably never saw in the main game, which is two Patriots tromping around and there's a bunch of other guys along with them. Um, and what we wanted to do is just create uh, something where, for people who enjoyed the combat in Bioshock and just want more of it. Um, you know, it's kind of for somebody who at the end of the game was like, I want to keep that, playing that game, I want to keep experiencing it, but I don't necessarily um, want to roll through the whole story again just to, you know, play with the mechanics. Uh, and also we were thinking about just giving an opportunity for the player to have their full kit of uh, you know, weapons and vigors pretty early on. You know, like this is, you can pretty much have everything very shortly after starting to play, um, which we thought would be a lot of fun for people in particular because certain uh, weapons or vigors maybe weren't even in the player's hands until fairly late in the campaign, like Return to Sender, which we see being used right here. I mean, you could get that in uh, Emporia, so really like the last quarter or so of the game. It's kind of awesome too because, I mean, you're totally right. It, it's cool that you can start out and kind of have every piece of the arsenal available to you, even even just in that. So I guess I'll back up. The way this works is you play through these waves. and There's four areas, each one has 15 waves. At the end of each wave, you come back, you get some money, uh, you yep. can purchase vigors and weapons, and everything is at your disposal. All the upgrades, all of the vigors, all the vigor upgrades, as long as you have enough cash in that moment, you can buy whatever you want. Yeah, um, and you can really prioritize, you know, which one do you like most? Like, personally, I really, I love charge. Like, I yes. am just an idiot <laughs> for charge. I just well, beat my hands hitters. together and laugh when I'm yeah. using it. So, I, uh, when I'm playing this, if I'm starting a new game, I'm going to pretty much spend all my money to make charge as cool as possible, as quickly as possible. Yeah, and that's what's so cool. I mean, you mentioned two Patriots walking around here, right? Like, there are areas that have two handymen, which is, like, certainly yep. something that was in the yep. campaign. And, For um, sure. Yeah, moments like that, like, your play style really comes into it, because I actually feel the same way. I use charge, like, all the time, and, um, oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't even notice that at the top, all this spinning. Oh, yeah, 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 whenever something new spits out. Yeah, so this is in between each wave. Um, the first time you complete any given wave, you're uh, rewarded with either an infusion or a piece of gear. It just alternates as and you go. It's super helpful too because, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, like I actually did the same thing. So I save my money until I could upgrade both, uh, get both charge upgrades, yep. and then you can take down handyman a lot quicker. There's, there's sirens in, in some of these fights. Like, I mean, yep. it's like the full arsenal of, of enemies from the campaign and terrifying combinations. Yep, and that's actually one thing we had thought about too when we were putting this together is um, you'll notice whenever you come back to the armory, you'll see what the upcoming challenge is going to be and also what the upcoming enemies are going to be. So. Um, the thinking there is just, we'll let people know what they're going to be dealing with and give them an opportunity to build out their kit appropriately. I mean, I find it kind of interesting too that um, there's leaderboards, which is kind of you know the closest that you guys have really come to multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, like that's true. Kind of asynchronously compete against each other, which is kind of awesome. Yep. Yeah, I thought that would be, I mean, when we started looking at things like score, um, you know, I think like leaderboards sort of become an, an obvious next step for something like that. And, uh, you know, it was certainly a lot to take on um, for, uh, for a piece of DLC to add something as complicated as leaderboards. You know, like Infinite obviously was a single player on the game. It didn't really have the, uh, anything built to support that. So we really needed to start this from scratch. And I'm super happy that uh, our, our programming team really did a great job in just getting this stuff up and running as quickly as they did. And um, one thing that popped up a minute ago when we died was, um, so when you finish, or, or when you died in the middle of a wave, rather, you get these three options. Yep. One of them is to continue, but your score is reset. Yep. One of them is to restart this entire like area, so restart in Fourier Arcade. 
And the third option is just to return to uh, the Columbia Archaeological Society, I believe. Uh, yep, yep, that's correct. Um, so kind of explain, give me the elevator pitch on the uh, Columbia Archaeological Society. So that's, that's the place that serves um, basically as the hub for, um, for Clash in the Clouds. It's where you select which um, map you want to go to. Uh, and it's also a place where we put in a gallery of um, various things that we thought people would like to see. Um, so I found a bunch of concepts that I thought were cool and people could unlock those uh, in there using money that they've earned while playing. Uh, we put in um, some phonographs. Uh, I thought it'd be cool to give people an opportunity to listen to some of the music that you find in the world um, and just listen to the recording in full. Uh, we got some behind the scenes videos of uh, Troy and Courtney doing voice work. Um, geez, uh, we put in models, uh, character models that you can unlock, and uh, hidden away in there, we also actually recorded some new um, boxophones that, as we were working on this, we were we were looking at response and feedback and questions that people had, and you know we're reading threads on message boards and articles um, that were analyzing Infinite and trying to figure out all these little bits and pieces and. There was a couple things here and there that were kind of mysterious to people that we didn't really intend to be mysterious, like sort of deep dive uh, lore questions. Uh, and we thought, well, maybe we can um, put in some more voxophones to help clarify a couple little things, like things like where did Biggers come from, so on and so forth. So those are hidden away in there as well. I'm not going to tell you how exactly to find them <laughs> now. It's kind of a surprise. Um, but uh, I thought that would be a cool little treat to add for fans of uh, Infinite. Yeah, and that's really cool, and I think it lets it stay kind of married to this narrative that obviously is kind of the foundation for all of this. Yeah, although admittedly the whole thing is, is pretty separate. Like that's oh, the sure, part sure. that acknowledges the narrative. The rest <laughs> of this is kind of like, yeah, it's goofy. It's a, it's, a big, uh, it's a big fight, and it is definitely focused on uh, the gameplay experience far more than anything. I mean, that was right from the get-go we were saying. We told ourselves, like, this is... This is about fun. We're not going to worry about necessarily making every group of enemies make sense. So you're saying this battle right now isn't canon? Yeah, really I, I would say that this battle is, is, <laughs> is not canonical. Absolutely. Um, you know, one other thing just popped up was this blue ribbon challenge. Um, I think these are kind of cool. These are kind of just unique ways to play through these levels that make them kind of a pain in the ass. Like, some of them are yep. really, really hard. It's like, try and do this entire level only using a machine gun. Or yep, and, like and that. that is why they are optional. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're hardcore, though. I mean, and it, it kind of creates this almost like a, like a difficulty tier because you can play through these waves, um, you know, just normally keep retrying, do what you need to do, or you can kind of give yourself these extra challenges of getting the blue ribbons and even yep. playing through and maintaining your score all throughout. So it's actually pretty deep. Yeah, like this one, this this wave in particular, to get the challenge, you need to use um, the tears and environmental damage, which really means you need to be incredibly evasive and constantly kiting people into that Tesla coil, uh, which is really hard. This is yeah. actually probably one of the hardest ones right now. Um, but something we were thinking about is when we're putting in things like leaderboards, how do you raise the skill ceiling as high as possible? Like, how can you make it so that you really have a way for the very best players to, to demonstrate and differentiate their, their level of skill? And I think that whoever is eventually going to sit at the top of the leaderboards has probably done a playthrough of the, of the room in which they have collected every piece of loot because the dollars go into your score. They've completed every blue ribbon challenge as they go, and they've also changed their weapons and vigors uh, for almost every every enemy that they take down because we're keeping track of that sort of stuff as well, and the more you mix it up, the higher your score is going to go. I think that's really cool because I know even in the campaign there were people who you know rely on guns more than vigors, and so it's cool yep. to kind of train people to mix up the combat a little more. Yeah, or even um, fall into a rut of using just like a single gun that they're comfortable with. Um, what I was looking for is ways to uh, encourage people to experiment uh, in a purely positive way. You know, like they don't want to punish somebody for just sticking with the gun that they're comfortable with. Um, but I want to make it, I want to make it juicy. You know, I want to make it uh, enticing to sort of branch out from your comfort zone. For sure. Well, I think you achieved it. I think it's really fun. It's um, so by the time this comes up, it is out now. Yep. I guess. Um, yeah. 
for today. Starting like starting the thirtieth, yeah, uh, and rolling out worldwide from that point forward. Also, awesome. we're gonna have the details. Uh, part of the season pass, I believe. That's correct. Or five dollars separately. That is correct. Awesome. Well, cool. Uh, Forrest, I appreciate the time, and uh, for all of your Bioshock Infinite needs, keep it locked to IGN.com. Thanks so much.